It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Philips BDM4037UW. The OSD is controlled by a joystick or jog button at the rear of the monitor towards the right side. This is a bit of a stretch um, from a, a normal viewing position, it depends on how close you've got the monitor to. Uh, to your face and how long your arms are, but for me it's a bit of a, a bit of a stretch. The monitor's sort of a bit low down, and it's not exactly the most comfortable um, OSD to use. I think I would have preferred to have seen a. I mean, I like the use of a joystick, but I would have preferred to have seen it placed under the Philips logo or something like that. It would make more sense, a bit easier to access. If you twiddle the joystick to the left. You can activate one of the smart image presets. There are various ones to choose from and some of these are explored in the written review. If you push the joystick up, you can access the multi-view, PBP and PIP, picture and picture and picture by picture settings. Um, I can't, I'm not going to show you these because I only have one source connected to the um, to the monitor, but if you had multiple different sources connected, you can have two windows displayed side by side. You can even have up to four sources connected and have four different windows displayed um, at different sections of the screen. If you press the joystick down, you get access to your custom key. It's set to audio source by default, so you can change the um, input that is used for the audio on the monitor. But you can configure this as I'll show you in a little bit. And if you twiddle it right you get to the main menu, the main OSD menu. The OSD is quite familiar if you've seen other Philips monitors um, in the last few years. The style hasn't really changed very much. First up you can change the input that's used by the monitor, so you can manually select that. If you had multiple things connected you might want to change that manually, for example. Next there's picture, and that has a picture format option. It has um, various different aspect ratio options depending on the resolution you're running. This is relevant if you're using a non-native resolution such as Full HD and you wanted to have that pixel mapped one to one with a black border around it rather than uh, interpolated and displayed across the entire screen. So this is just going to look strange because I've got it running on the uh, native resolution but I've actually selected 4x3 here and you can see it's put it into a 4x3 aspect ratio. If it was actually a 4x3 resolution that might be um, useful because it wouldn't look distorted and weird. And obviously one by one is just going to be the same as uh, widescreen on this particular model. You can adjust the brightness and the contrast as well as the sharpness. Brightness and contrast are adjusted in increments of 1, where sharpness is adjusted in increments of 10. And the Default value of 50 is optimal in my opinion anyway. Smart response settings, various different settings here, they're explored in the review. Off, fast, faster and fastest. Smart contrast, the dynamic contrast feature of the monitor which is also explored in the review. A gamma setting. Um, again it's explored in the review like a lot of these settings are. Pixel orbiting, what this does is it's on by default and it just shifts the image by a single pixel or a few pixels every now and then, uh, just very occasionally. And it's just designed to try and minimise or prevent image retention. And I've been using this monitor for quite a while now, and in my for my uses I haven't noticed any image retention at all. I have left this um, feature on because I don't notice any negative implications for doing so. Um, so I just leave it switched on unless it's annoying you somehow. I don't know why it would. It's very occasional, the pixel shifting anyway. There's an overscan feature which would be used for um, 
if you're connected to an older games console or something like that which might use such an option but it's greyed out for me, I'm using DisplayPort and it's not relevant for me there is PIP P by P so another way of changing the picture and picture and picture by picture settings and you get a bit of a better view of the sort of options that would be available if I was using this um, you can change the size of the picture and picture window for example as well as the position that it's displayed on the screen there's an audio menu which allows you to adjust various aspects of the integrated speakers or anything connected to the 3.5mm headphone jack on the monitor. The um, speakers are very loud. I don't think they're particularly good quality. They're, I mean, they're not awful, but um, they're not exactly amazing either. And I'll ex explain that a little bit in the review, but they do have a lot of volume. See, I've only got mine set to 10. I, generally use headphones connected to the PC but when I do use the speakers on this I, I find a volume of 10 actually quite adequate so they're really quite loud speakers. Um, there's a colour menu that allows you to adjust the colour temperature to one of the predefined uh, pre values, the default being 6500K or 6500 Kelvin. You can set the monitor to 5000K which is a low blue light setting or various other, um, well, essentially high blue light settings as well, depending on your preferences and needs. There's an sRGB emulation mode, which is also explored in the review, and user define, which allows you to adjust the red, green, and blue color channels. As I explained in the review, once you go on user define, um, or actually, in fact, once you go on sRGB, just hover over it, it actually sets the brightness to 100, and you lose whatever brightness you were using before which is a bit annoying and also annoying is when you select user define um, the gamma handling of the monitor changes regardless of which gamma setting you've uh, applied previously so that means that now I've cycled through both options I'd have to adjust, uh, adjust my brightness to something more comfortable and I'll also have to reselect my gamma mode so it's a little bit of a annoying quirk of this monitor. Um, similar things happened on the older model as well, so I'm a bit surprised they haven't actually fixed that. Next is language, which just allows you to change the language that the OSD is displayed in. OSD settings allows you to change the horizontal and vertical position of the OSD on the screen. You can apply various levels of transparency. You can change the idle timeout period, which is how long the OSD remains on the screen after the last button press before it automatically disappears. You can, of course, um, exit the OSD manually just by pressing uh, pressing left a few times. User key, which I mentioned before, that's when you just press the OSD joystick down before you've entered the main menu. So you've got just a couple of things you can change that to audio source volume or input and um, I've changed that to input now and you can see that allows you to select VGA, um, HDMI or DisplayPort and various different uh, inputs of the monitor there. So there's not really a massive amount of scope for configuring the user key, just three different options there. Would have been more useful to have a, an easy way to adjust the brightness or something like that. Um, set up various greyed out options here which only apply to the VGA, the analog connection. It's all automatically um, optimized on digital connections anyway. Resolution notification which just gives you a pop-up on the screen when you're using a non-native resolution um, and it reminds you of the optimal native resolution 3840 by 2160 on the display. USB standby mode. You can have the USB ports so they are um, active when the monitor itself is off or on standby or you can have them inactive. If you have them active it does use a little bit more power even if you're not actually using the USB ports which is why the option exists and why it's set to off by default but it's only a very small amount of power to use anyway um, but if you do wish to use the USB ports when the monitor itself is on standby then just select the on instead of off option there. You can change the display port revision. It's set to 1.2 by default. 
which yields the full functionality of the monitor, the full 60 Hz at the UHD resolution. Um, but if you've got an older system and it only supports DisplayPort 1.1, that's all this option is for. And you will be limited to 30 Hz at the native resolution if you select that. There's an option to reset everything to the factory default. And finally, there is an information section, which just shows you the model number, the serial number, and also the resolution and refresh rate currently being used. So there you have it. That was the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Philips BDM 4037UW. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info.